Hello, hello, everybody. You are watching New Vocations Racehorse Adoption Program's uh, Wednesday tour. We appreciate you being here with us today. So my name is Sarah Coleman. I'm the Public and Community Relations Director for New Vocations, and this is Lindsay Gilbert. She is our Applications Manager, and behind the camera is Erica Larson. She's our Social Media Guru. So we are thankful that you're here today to walk around with us. Today we're going to do a quick tour through Barn 2. This is the Rob Shammer Poly Barn. And we're going to go over and we're going to talk to Leandra, our facility manager and trainer, and Lindsay, and talk to them a little bit about how the adoption ap application process works with New Vocations. So as you guys know, New Vocations is the oldest and largest racehorse adoption program. We help both thoroughbreds and standard breds here in Lexington. We specifically do thoroughbreds. And we're going to introduce you to three of them today. So this is Dancing in the Rain. We call him Rain Man. He's very sweet. He's the one, if you guys were following our social media on the 4th of July, who was covered in red, white, and blue different soaps to keep him bright gray, as bright as we can. He is a 2014 son of Get Stormy. And this horse actually ran on the flat and steeplechase. So he had 15 starts and won about $56,000 and he just came over to our training side, so we can't really tell you a whole lot about him other than he's a beast and he is lovely. And he's like, thank you for the treat. <laughs> so, oh, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. So next, after he's done talking, we're gonna meet Tis a Pleasure. His nickname is Meatball, which as you can see, he is a little chunky monkey. He's a super good dude. Uh, he's a 2013 son of Tis now. And he was donated by Mandy Pope. That's why he's in the lovely Mandy Pope stall. We are super thankful to her. And he came over into training just two days ago. So Leandra says that he's a good boy under saddle. He is just excited and out of shape, which I feel like is most of us after <laughs> in, being in quarantine. But he's really cool. We're excited to see what, what he wants to do. He's like, thank oh, you, you Lindsay, want I want buck? the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Some of our horses, as you can tell, when they come off the track, aren't quite sure that they like peppermint well, flavored anything. We do. Lindsay we has do. made him appreciate it. So, and as you can see, it's a beautiful day in Lexington, Kentucky. These are a couple of our larger fields as we walk down the pop out. And next, we're going to introduce you to Paul. Paul with all actually has been adopted. We're super excited for him. So he is going to go home hopefully soon. He's actually going to stay locally here in Lexington, Kentucky. He's going to give these guys the eyeball as they walk behind you. And his story is actually really cool. So he is a Stone Street horse. Stone Street is very good to new vocations. And when they were shipping him over to Rune Riddle to be gelded, one of the girls who worked on him fell in love with him. So the gentleman who was shipping him said, hey, he's going to New Vocations to be retired. So uh, she contacted us, sent her application in through Lindsay, was approved, and is going to be taking him home. So he must be a very sweet boy to have somebody fall in love with him that fast. Hi, huh, buddy. He's like, take me out. Do you deserve a cookie, too? <laughs> hmm? No? He's Never like, I don't know. No. out of the bucket. This was one of the hardest things. Was I was so distressed that my retired racehorse didn't like mints. I'm like, you have to like mints. It's the only thing Let I can keep in my pocket. you. <laughs> so now we're going to walk over. We're going to, there will be a couple horses working in the background as we talk to Leandra and Lindsay. And I'm sure Leandra will give you guys a, a heads up about who is in the ring. But we just got a new load of shavings. As you can see, our doors are still open to our machinery shed. Are you ladies getting on? Katoff. Wayfair. Wayfair. Look at them. They look so enthused. They're like, it's hot. We need a nap. <laughs> They're such good dudes. Look at them. They're like, oh, we're kind of tired. <laughs> He's posing for you, Erica. So Lindsay, we're going to stand over here and Erica will film this way so that 
they can keep an eye on the horses getting worked. And I'm going to ask you some questions about how they do their applications if they're interested in adopting a horse from new vocation. Absolutely. We have only one with their head out today. They must all be napping. Oh, there's another. Okay, Miss Lindsay. So let's, I know a lot of people are interested in how they can apply to be an approved adopter with new vocation. So, and I know that all of our trainers are very good about telling people that they cannot even really open up a dialogue about a potential horse until they are an approved, mm -hmm. uh, approved adopter. So can you kind of walk us through, you know, what kind of questions are asked on the adoption application, which can be found at newvocations.org in case anybody's looking for it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we do get a lot of questions about why, you know, our trainers um, don't really open up a dialogue until someone um, has put in an application and usually until they're approved. Um, and that's just because our donors really um, look to us to, you know, ensure that their horses find a really good home and we take that really seriously. So um, we do encourage people to put in an application early, maybe even before you find a horse that you're looking to adopt um, because our horses do go quickly. So like uh, Sarah said, you can find the application at newvocations.org slash adopt. Um, you can fill it out online and they'll ask you, the application asks a lot of questions, but I promise they're all um, very important. Everything from, you know, your employer and your profession to where you plan to keep an adopted horse. Um, we do need a lot of information about your boarding facility. You know, how many horses are there? How many stalls there are? You know, the fencing in the turnout areas, things like that. Um, we will need references from your veterinarian, your farrier, um, your trainer if you have one, and we ask for two personal references, and um, they do get called, so that's another important thing is that um, we have a vet reference form that will be sent out to the veterinarian that services your facility or um, you know, comes to your barn, and they do have to fill that out, and um, I do have to chat with your references, so it's pretty important to give them a heads up and, and let them know that you um, have filled out an application and are interested in adopting because the time frame we get this question a lot is how long it takes to get approved and that's completely dependent on how quickly your references get back to me so you know it can take a day if people contact me right away if your vet's on top of it and fills out our form and you know your trainer calls me back or answers on the first ring would be amazing <laughs> um, you know but I understand people are busy and if it takes a little while to um, you know get in touch with people it's it's just completely dependent on how um, how quickly people get back to me so. absolutely and I know that some of the questions we get a lot are uh, talking specifically about why do you ask all these questions absolutely um, and I think it's it's you hit the nail right on the head and just saying you know we're trying to ensure that our horses go to appropriate homes and that we do the best by our donors yeah hi absolutely. Rambo hi hi buddy he says oh the welcoming committee's here <laughs> so if you had two hints that you could mm -hmm. give potential adopters what what would they be very very easy um, just one, adopt or apply to adopt early, excuse me. Um, like I said, our horses go very quickly. And so a lot of the times people will wait until they see a horse that they're interested in to apply. Um, and normally, unfortunately, it happens all the time. Um, you know, people, the, the horse is already adopted by the time I process your application, which is really unfortunate and it breaks my heart too. So just definitely apply before you think you're ready. Um, applications are good for two years, so you don't have to adopt right away, but it's good to have an application on file. And then, like I said before, just let your references know, your vet and your trainer or your personal references that I'm going to be calling, because if you want to expedite the application, um, if they know ahead of time to, that they're going to hear from me, then usually we can get it done really fast. So it's kind of like a job application. Absolutely. When you send in your resume, let your references know. <laughs> yep, let your so references that's know. That's perfect. And we, we appreciate that too. And especially if your vet is unfamiliar with our organization, um, a little bit of a heads up about what we are is generally fairly helpful. So they're not like, who is this? What do you want? <laughs> what do you need? Yeah. Um, but that's that's wonderful. So, and we do have some stipulations on who we do not and do adopt out to. So that's something as well. And I know that Lindsay is very good as our, um, everybody who reads the application saying, okay, well, you know, this kind of fencing might not work for thoroughbreds, but if you can do X, Y, and Z, you know, mm -hmm. we can relook at your application. Yeah. And I think that's really important to note is that it's not one and done. Right. Um, so if, if Lindsay, uh, something is flagged as, you know, potentially inappropriate or hazardous to the horses or whatever, she will always open a dialogue with mm -hmm. the adopter to say, this might be able to be fixed essentially. And that's important to note as well is that um, you can find our applicant requirements on our website right under the um, adoption application. So if you're wondering if like 
something will work for us or not work for us or um, you know just open that form it's a pdf it downloads onto your computer so it might not pop up but i promise it's there <laughs> click on it and just read through our requirements um, it makes everybody's lives easier and if you have questions just reach out and um, let me know and i'm happy to help as much as i can awesome so miss leandra mm -hmm. I'm going to, can you give her your yeah, microphone? I'm absolutely. sorry. Absolutely. We're going to talk to Leandra a little bit about what the potential first open dialogue with an adopter is as they, as they contact you. So the very first thing I can tell you as Leandra is getting mic'd is that she's going to ask, are you an approved adopter? <laughs> and then, um, Thank you. Thank you, Miss Leandra. So what are, when somebody contacts you and they're like, I'm interested in this horse, specifically this horse, do you, if you, what are the questions you ask the adopt, potential adopter as you get to learn more about them and their riding abilities? Well, I think for everyone, the process is a little bit different. And obviously we work with a huge spectrum of people and what they're looking for and the all of that so I usually just start by asking them a little bit about themselves like background what you're looking for in a horse because what tends to happen is that people have a list of wants or needs or don't wants and absolutely can't haves so that information is super important especially for us trainers um, where once you're approved, you've opened the door to start this dialogue. And then when we're trying to go from saying, you know, are you going to be a good candidate for our program in general? Then we're looking at who's going to be the best type of horse for you. And that's, that even helps us for not just looking at the horses that we currently have, but horses who come through the program since we have always have new horses coming in and we always have new horses coming up through the ranks of training and becoming available. So what's really going to help us is specific criteria um, because there are a lot of people who are looking for just like a 16 hand plus like relatively uninjured especially with geldings and whatnot so the more specific information we can get and the more that we can glean from the adopter about those specifics like i said and then also things like personality and and those things will help us to narrow it down because then those are the things that we remember if we're kind of looking out for a specific type or if we're trying to hone in on who's going to be an appropriate match and especially with a lot of people adopting remotely now not having the opportunity to come out to our facility we've still had a lot of great success in placing horses and having great homes where it seems like they're good matches and everybody's getting along and it's ideal but in order for us to make those matches without being able to put horse and human together we need to get a feel for those specific criteria the same sort of x factors so just getting a sense of what's important i guess overall would be that that big next step that's awesome so i know um we all every employee of new vocations gets asked quite a bit um, how do you have 150 horses in your program? There's only 30 odd online. Yeah. Um, so I think what you said is really important is about letting people be very honest about what they're looking for. And mm -hmm. you're like, well, you know, and then in the back of the head, you're like, oh, well, we have two in rehab that might yeah. be, you know, uh, appropriate for you. Right. Uh, and, and I know that at least when my girlfriends all apply, I'm always like, be really honest about your riding abilities. Yeah. You know, like we don't ever want to overface anybody. You don't ever want to, but, um, I, I think, do you feel that you have to explain a lot of things to them regarding old injuries that they've been rehabbed from like if they want a hunter mm -hmm. do you have to explain that a bow is not necessarily it doesn't preclude them from being a hunter yeah absolutely i think discipline specifics like that are a huge factor so even like you said the hunter ring if i have a horse who roars that might not matter for a jumper but it will matter for a hunter because whether or not we like it, that's something that will be noticed by a judge. So things like that, or you're, like you're saying, injuries, um, people certainly will have either preconceived notions or sometimes even worse, Googling injuries because Googling tends to just show the most dramatic mm -hmm. cases where we really ask people to work with us um, and, and take into account what our vet is recommending because we all work with vets to figure out what's going to be most appropriate for the horse but then also we're always able to send the information that we're 
getting. So diagnostic work like x-rays and ultrasounds, we don't like to leave a lot of guesswork. If we're noticing something about a horse or if we know they have an old injury, we've probably done updated images or we have a really good sense of what they'll be able to do or what our vets have said they'll be able to do. So we have that information. We love being able to send it on to your vet because ultimately you're going to have to work with your vet, you as an adopter, um, to work with your vet in the long term so if they if they think hey this injury is okay for what you want to do mm -hmm. or the opposite then you really have to work with the team that you've got so so we <laughs> number one i always encourage people not to google things we're happy to <laughs> give you resources if you want to dive into it but a lot of times you're going to get really dramatic cases and you might just eliminate a horse who could be your perfect match um people Sometimes, um, a lot of times if we get like right now, I, so science, right? Just taking a step back. Perfect example. I was just talking with somebody the other day who wants a horse who's a little more experienced because she wants a horse who has the level-headed mindset. Mm -hmm. She wants a horse who's kind of calm and take things as they go, sort of like go with the flow type horse. But she had in her mind, like that personality component was important. Not so much the age, although mm -hmm. we kind of came into the conversation saying, I, I want a horse who's a little bit older. Right now, the horses we have who are older are very excitable. Yep. And a little more set in their ways. They've been on the track a little bit longer, so they just have quirks that make them not exactly to go with the flow types. But I do have a three-year-old who doesn't care about a thing yep. and he didn't race and he's just kind of like really really well handled from the time he was a baby yep. doesn't care about a thing so i say you know i i understand this is the personality you're looking for i do have a three-year-old who has that <laughs> and having a three-year-old doesn't mean they'll always stay like right that. right you're gonna have that baseline that you want and you have these really capable people on your team like a great trainer and rider who can work with you through anything that would come up but yep. he has that that foundation that you're looking for as opposed to sticking with the original criteria which was an older horse and then trying to backtrack and get him to be a horse that mm -hmm. he's not right now yep so that sort of thing like that exactly that conversation if we had just looked at the criteria and said okay older horse who yep. could be we a dressage it. horse here we go well we have horses yep. but based off of the continued conversation they're not going to be an appropriate match um, and even things like with that same person and I, I she's a, the very very lovely person and I, actually this was so helpful uh, she doesn't want a chestnut and, and yep. she was like I can't explain it or it's much yep. more in detail yep. than I want to explain but like I just don't, don't want, want it, it. Yep. and I'm like that's perfect that's even better yeah, because then I know what not to down. suggest for you absolutely <laughs> so even things like that where you know people think that they're being ridiculous I mm -hmm. say absolutely not please give me all of the weird isms that you want and don't want so in my head then once they are approved by Lindsay when they send you an email you basically let's say my name's Sarah I'm emailing you I'm like Leandra I'm really interested in x y and z mm -hmm. however here are my top five priorities like for, in my head we had, there's so many emails and so much communication it would almost be helpful for you if you're like this is who I'm interested in these are the top five things that are most important to me yes you know and then that way you can say okay well if I don't know necessarily that this one fits these top five criteria right. and that kind of thing so speaking of that, yeah. would you be able to tell us who is working in your ring? Yeah, absolutely. So in the ring right now, we have Wayfarer, who is a three-year-old. And that's a, he's actually the three-year-old I was talking about. With a good about. brain. He's, yeah, unraced, has zero cares in the world. Allie is going around on him. So she's in the teal shirt on a loose rein. And Indeed. he, yeah, he's a big chunker. Doesn't care about a thing. He has an old soul personality and just has experience type personality beyond his years. Kataf is the other horse in the ring. He came to us actually in a very rare scenario as a stallion and was gelded here. Um, he is also a three-year-old, um, had a little bit more of a spunkier personality, which you would expect of a three-year-old stallion, but is settling into the routine clearly really nicely and just becoming a, definitely a horse to watch. Um, he is now showing his sweet side. He's uh, doing really well. What do you think about Kataf now? He's lovely. He's lovely. <laughs> He's exactly. A good dude. Yeah. So Wayfarer here we call Ray because the Ray Ban Wayfarer sunglass 
In Kataf, we just call Kataf. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. How long ago was he gelded? He was gelded three weeks ago. He's or good a month, dude, yeah, huh? about a month ago. He's really good. He's a good dude. Good boy. He is a very good boy. He's working on um, just filling out mostly. He is more of a like string bean three year old. You can see his the chest no is more narrow. Yep. You have so two three year old geldings. They're around Isn't the same height. Totally, totally different builds and yep. personalities. Yep. And that's where I where I think having adopted a three year old, it's very interesting to me when people are like, I need it to be sixteen too. And I'm yeah. like, dude, just give it a minute. It's three. You know, yeah, like it will get there. It'll get there. Absolutely. It'll get there. So and I think that's something too, is that you are always very good in your dialogues by saying, you know, this is what we think they will be. Yeah. So on and so forth. But Lindsay, do you have any other last words of wisdom? I don't think so. No. I think we've pretty much covered it. Well, we thank you, ladies. Thank you, Leandra and Lindsay. Um, this is New Vocations in Lexington. You guys are more than welcome to follow us on all of our social media channels. We are on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook Live, clearly. Um, if you are not in the market to adopt a horse at this time, we would welcome any uh, social media shares of our adoptable horses. Not that you can really keep them in stalls, but no. uh, we would very much appreciate that. And as always, our website is chock full of ways that you can help us, whether it's financial donations, volunteering at events, uh, and other things like that. But we really appreciate your time, and I'm sure you can will I do add the meet. One oh, more yes, thing, yes, actually, this absolutely. is going to be my fine. This is the cherry on top because this is going to help anybody who has become an approved adopter or thinks they might soon want to adopt from us once you're approved and you're reaching out to trainers this is my insider tip love it have your like you said your top five and know the specific questions doesn't matter if they're 50 questions long start that dialogue with us my number one pet peeve is when people just ask me for more information i just want yeah can you tell me more yes about what i could tell you their favorite color i i could their tell favorite you treat. what flavors they like and don't they like their water icy cold we oh. know these horses very well and we're happy to answer any question but it's hard for us to originate all of the questions that you might ask and to try to anticipate everything that will be important right. to you as a specific person so definitely figure out the questions that are super, that are important to you doesn't matter if they're 10 miles long we're happy to answer them we love specific things my number one pet peeve is when somebody just asks me for more because we put so much into those yes. profiles just trying yes. to guess what people will want but uh you're much better off just just figuring out all the things you want to ask us and ask them all the things and i'm happy to do it that's my cherry on top tip for you <laughs> i love it thank you guys i'm sure leandra will see you tomorrow at noon for the meet and greet